I checked one, two, one, two is my mic. Oh, it's not a mic, it's a knee. It's anyway, a knee. It's a knee, unfortunately, <laughs> but it looks like a mic. <laughs> oh, welcome back. I'm sorry, my Ibrahim. I'm sitting here with Dr. Suresh Siva at Alti Orthopedic Hospital. This is a one conversation in a series of many talking about bone health care and talking about what is provided here at Alti Orthopedic Hospital. Alti stands for adding life to years and it's about thriving and not just surviving and living comfortably and being able to move and live your best life. That's what we do here at Alti. Che, what we do, you know, suddenly I'm working here. You are. <laughs> you are a key part of the team. So Dr. Suresh is a specialist here at Alti. If you're just joining for some reason, just a little bit of a recap. He is the man. He specializes in hip replacement, knee replacement. Um, he's also the Congress president of CCOT, which is one of the most renowned international orthopedic uh, societies in the world and he's also a friend of mine and you know he's the man I'm going to go to when my knees give in eventually and this is a kneecap doctor yep this is a model okay. of a knee replacement so we were talking a bit earlier about in general mm -hmm. you know what causes uh, joint problems and you know how we shouldn't be afraid of the actual treatment so just to clarify at alti it's not just about surgery mm. there's also non-surgical alternatives so can we touch a little bit on that first dr suresh you know yeah. when you say non-surgical are we talking acupuncture or what, what kind of non-surgical treatment yeah well there's a whole range of non-surgical things we okay. can do so when you have knee pain or hip pain you first start with a painkiller mm -hmm. physical therapy acupuncture yes oh okay oh, so yeah. it does help yeah absolutely okay Tense it helps machine. but it doesn't fix it it doesn't it doesn't fix the underlying course oh. and then of course you can go into injections and these injections can be steroid injections or visco supplementation or prp or stem cells and we do all these non-operative things mm. for you but once the situation gets so bad and your bone is so deformed that you cannot do non-operative then we do operative treatment so we, we, right. we usually exhaust all the non-operative things. A new thing that we're doing now is uh, radiofrequency ablation, called where you put a high-frequency wand in your knee or your hip, okay. and you burn away the nerves. Like into it itself? Just around. Yeah, it's just around. We use the nerve. That must hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. No, it's done no? under anesthesia. Okay. Uh, it's uh, different companies make it. One is called a Coolif. We burn away the nerve and the pain goes away. But again, this lasts up to two years, 24 months. And then you're back to... Then you're back. It gives you two years of pain free. But if you do change your lifestyle, mm -hmm. Dr. Suresh, would it help? Would it come back? Say you go and you do that. Can you improve your life yourself yes. after you have a treatment like that? Yeah, you can. the most important thing you can do is lose weight. What? Okay, so the, the thing is when you are uh, Logic. When you are yeah. a hip arthritis patient or a knee arthritis mm -hmm. patient, here's your These knee. These are all the knees. Here's your knee. That is severe. And there's, if you're a heavy person, there's a lot of weight going oh. through the knee. So it's grinding. It's grinding and pressing down. And that's going to cause more pain. If you lose weight, less pressure, less grinding, less pain. So one of the first things we tell people is physical, physical therapy or physiotherapy, where you can strengthen the muscles, lose weight, and so the muscles will support the joint and take some weight off the joint. So that's the first thing. So what about support. weight training then? I mean, you're talking about decreasing weight, but what about people who go into the gym and do weight training and lifting heavy weights? That's good because the muscles, are, when good? the muscles are strengthened, they offload the bone and the joint. But are you not adding weight then to your joints? The weight training is to make the muscles stronger. And when you have a strong muscle, the joint is somewhat protected. Okay. If you have a weak muscle, the joint does all the work. Okay, so we definitely need to add resistance training, yeah. take care of our diet, watch our posture so far, don't carry heavy books, <laughs> see somebody at Alti, specifically the specialist. Yes. Now, how many surgeries do you do a day, Dr. Suresh? Well, or I, months, a for month, example? A month, be probably about 20 surgeries, 20 to wow. 30 surgeries. And the surgeries. majority are? Majority are hip and knee replacements. Okay. Some shoulder surgeries, some sports surgeries like ACL reconstruction, okay. some bunion surgeries. Wow. You know, so mainly lower limb and upper limb. Okay, and and so when you say sports surgeries, right? Mm -hmm. Um. When I think of sports, I don't really think of people who are 
too elderly. It's usually young people. So are you saying that for young people, when I say young, I mean like can be kids, teenagers, yeah. people in their 20s. Do, do they also come in? Do they need to take care of their joints or is it just go, go, go until you get older and then you fix it? No, as I said in the beginning of this series, prevention is the best yeah. cure. Okay. Everyone has to take precautions, including mm. the kids, including the athletes, mm. including people who are playing sports. Yeah. And everyone has to. Take I mean, when you're born, your joints are in good condition. Condition. Correct. So it's wear and tear, basically. Yeah. Wear and tear and genetic. And don't forget, we also do trauma surgery, fractures. So broken bones. Oh, yeah. So we have an emergency department here, which just opened last month, brand new state-of-the-art emergency department downstairs. So we're now getting patients who have accidents, patients who fall, mm -hmm. patients who go into uh, football and ah. tear their ligaments or their bones. So we have a lot of patients coming in with the ambulance and we treat those patients too. So are there any sports that say, for example, are not good for joints and for the bones, Dr. Suresh? I mean, are all sports good? I mean, <laughs> when I see long jumpers and people like that, I mean, sometimes it makes me wonder, you yes. know, how that impacts their joints, you know, bounce, bounce, boom, boom. You know? Well, obviously high impact sports like jumping and mm. running are bad mm. and low impact sports like yoga are good right. but you can't stop people from living their from life living. you have to say you know live your life and do it properly so when i was working in the u.s i was one of the doctors for the san francisco ballet and really? the ballet has really a lot of pressure on the joints on their feet yeah yeah i was helping some of those people uh mm. working on their feet and their joints so they love it and they love ballet. You can't tell them not to do it. Not to dance. But the thing yeah. is, you must uh, take precautions, warm up before you go play sports, make sure you do proper warm up, uh, proper cool down exercises, proper stretching. Mm. Once you do all that, your risk of injury is much less. Right. But the wear and tear is still there, doctor. Wear and tear is still Isn't it? There, I mean, yeah. so they might come back in the future for mm -hmm. hip, knee replacement. You know, Correct. you can see, I mean, how ball ballerinas, I mean, not just ballerinas, I mean, all of us generally, you know, how yeah. we live our lives nowadays, yeah. you know, we're, we're carrying too much. We put a lot of pressure on our bodies. We're not sleeping enough. Does that affect the joints, sleep? Um, how much rest you have? Well, uh, sleep doesn't have a direct effect. Yes, but but uh, lifestyle, lifestyle as a whole. Lifestyle is very important. Mm, you must okay. have a, a you know, good work-life balance. Okay, so tell us a bit about the machines. Okay, one thing I just want to point out to the audience: if you come to Alti and you see what they have, they have some of the best machines that I've seen. They look like transformers here. I mean, we're talking like machines that you cannot imagine. There is a weight-bearing MRI where you don't need to go and sit in a tunnel to get an MRI and feel claustrophobic. You can stand up and actually be assessed in that position and feel like less afraid. And there is the imaging machine, the EOS. Yeah, EOS. And that's something, EOS, that you really are passionate about. I love it, Do you want yeah. to talk about that? that yeah, so we have, we have the Malaysia's first and only weight-bearing MRI machine, which mm -hmm. we brought from Italy at huge cost and expense. We had to crane it up eight floors and break a hole in the wall and reinforce the floors. But it's worth it because a lot of patients, they get claustrophobic. Yeah. They cannot go into a tunnel. And the second thing to remember is we spend most of our lives upright. We spend one third of our lives sleeping and two thirds of our life upright, standing, standing yeah. or sitting. Yeah. So we, we figured we need to have an MRI in the standing position or the sitting position because that will reproduce the symptoms that you're having, reproduce your anatomy when you're standing or sitting. Whereas if you have an MRI lying flat, uh, most patients don't have pain when they're sleeping. You don't. When you yeah. lie down, you're like, ah, oh, I'm yeah. so relaxed. It takes all the gravity <laughs> off of yeah. everything. So you don't have pain. Yes. Most patients, they have back pain or hip pain when they're standing yes. or walking. True. So we said we must recreate that in the MRI. Mm. So when you come to Alti to have your MRI, you start off flat and then the slowly turns and you become upright. Wow. And then we take a picture and we can see your spine, your hip, your knee and that will tell us a lot more information on what's causing the pain. So it's actually like to diagnose yeah. uh, a person from head to toe. Correct. It looks like you're stepping into a futuristic shower. 
Correct. Let me tell you, um, uh, you know, it's just amazing. It feels so like you've gone into the, the future. The EOS machine is from Paris. Okay. So the guy who invented it actually got a Nobel Prize. And this is ultra low radiation okay. and it scans your whole body like one of those high-tech airport scanners. Mm -hmm. And then once you've done it, it can measure all the angles in your body, the spinal angles, the hip angles, the knee angles, and it really tells us whether these angles are within normal limits, are your hip joints accurately aligned, is yeah. your spine accurately aligned, do you right. have some abnormal posture, and then we can advise you on how to correct it. So these two machines are really good. The EOS machine is especially good for scoliosis. So any children out there who have scoliosis, please come and get an EOS scan done so we can accurately assess your spine. EOS, EOS is the name and getting scanned is the game. Do you yes, like it? Yeah. correct. Got a good crack at that, yep. no pun intended. Okay, so got some more questions. Uh, Mei Ling from Subang Jaya is asking, uh, what are some of the signs we should be aware of that would require a trip to Alti? I mean, what she's asking basically is some of the symptoms. Mm. At what point do you say, okay, I need to go now to Alti? But this comes back to what you said earlier. Is it prevention or are we treating? Which yeah. is, you well, know. I would do once a year screening, of course, you have to do that. But the symptoms, the most important one is pain. If you have a nagging okay. pain and the pain doesn't go away, you got to see someone. The second one is deformity. If you have a deformed knee or a hip. And, wow. and the third one is if you hear clicking noises. Clicking noises? Clicking in your hip Hang or on. your knee. or. And is that a bad thing to do, to make it click? No, that's not bad. But I'm saying if your hip and knee have clicking while you're walking oh. and they swell up, Yes. then you should see something. Oh my goodness, doctor, my left knee clicks. And it swells. Goes, yeah. It doesn't swell, but it goes... I'm breaking. <laughs> oh, no. I need to be fixed. I need to step into the EOS. EOS. So pain, deformity, clicking, swelling. This does not sound very attractive yes. at all. <laughs> so okay. you, must, you must look into that and, and don't ignore it. And, and somebody else asked, this is Jason Tan from Kada. how many mm. trips should we make to an orthopedic hospital for bone screenings? Is it like a once in a lifetime thing or is it every 10 years? It depends on your age and whether you have osteoporosis, but okay. in general, once in two years is fine. Once in two years, come on over to Alti and just get screened. I mean, who doesn't want to step into this futuristic, like fully yes. like transformer like machine? No, I'm serious. It really is. Yeah. Okay. So when we come back, we're going to take another break right now. We're going to discuss um, moving forward, how you can get yourself to Alti, what is the HSC screening all about? Uh, how much does it cost? And any other questions that we might have. Um, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to get Dr. Suresh to analyze my spine because I just realized I got some serious clicking in my neck <laughs> and we're going to have a bit of a, a break and we'll be back after this. See you guys. Stay with us. <laughs> 